Hello everyone, back tuning in to today's video. We're going to have a look at the weather for next week's 10 days or today's video. Uh, that will take us to around the 22nd of September. So uh, we're going to turn into the second half of the month with week's 10 day time frame uh, now. We'll have a look at the uh, extended GFS and E7 ensembles over to around a couple of weeks and the Beijing Clock Centre at the end of the video uh, for the next 40 uh, days. That takes us, of course, well into October. Right, so let's go on. We're going to start in the tropical Atlantic. So we've got two areas of interest in the tropical Atlantic uh, at the moment. We've got uh, this orange X just here. And then we've also got a, we've got a uh, yellow X uh, over there. Let's deal with the... Uh, oops, let's go backwards. Let's deal with the yellow X first of all. So that one is Disturbance 2, and it's uh, got a 0% chance of cyclone formation in the next 28 hours, but a 40% chance in the next five days. The same with that one. A tropical wave located just west of Cabo Verde Islands is producing a small area of disorganised showers and thunderstorms. Conditions appear conducive for development of this system, and a tropical depression could form early next week while it moves westward over the tropical Atlantic toward the Lesser Antilles. So that might develop into something sort of early next week time frame. Uh, and then we've also got this orange X uh, just here in the Caribbean. Let's see what we're saying about that one. It's Disturbance 1. There's a 50% chance of cyclone formation in the next two days. A 70% chance, a high chance now, in the next five days. They're saying with this, a trough of low pressure is uh, producing widespread cloudiness and showers and thunderstorms may extend from the southeast of Bahamas, northeastward over the adjacent Atlantic waters. Although limited development of this system is anticipated today, conditions are forecast to become a little more conducive for tropical cyclone formation over the weekend, and a tropical depression is likely to form as the system moves northwestward at 5 to 10 miles an hour, across the Florida Straits and Southern Florida and into the eastern Gulf of Mexico. This disturbance will likely produce periods of lowly heavy rain and gusty winds across the Bahamas and uh, across uh, and gusty winds across the Bahamas through Friday and across Florida during the weekend. An, an Air Force Reserve Reconnaissance aircraft is scheduled to investigate the system this afternoon if necessary. So they might be going to put a plane up and uh, have a look. So that could well be our next named tropical storm, Disturbance 1. Disturbance 2 could also become a tropical storm and or hurricane um, during the early part of next week. So, obviously, uh, we're well into the peak of the hurricane tropical storm season now. It's kind of mid to late September is going to, on average, be the peak of the season. So, obviously, all eyes down on the tropics over the coming days. Uh, these are the 500 bit of our high W flow charts from the Penn State University for the next uh, week, 10 days. We've got the ECMWF on the top and the GFS, which we'll have a look in a moment, is on the bottom. So 500 millibars is an area in the absolute high pressure and low pressure are being moved around by the jet stream. Red x plates, high pressure, blue to low pressure. These are the mean flow charts for 7 to 10 days time, which takes us to around the 22nd of uh, September. So heading towards the end of the third week of September. And you can see that with the uh, ECM, we've got a big ridge of high pressure. Talked about this in the video uh, yesterday, of course. High pressure ruling the roof. So in the 7 to 10 day time frame, high pressure is sat there right over top of the country. You can't really make us out because the colours are so vibrant, but that's where we are. Low pressure is in the Atlantic and also to our east and northeast. The jet stream doing something a little bit like that. So we're well and truly high and dry there with that big ridge centred over top of the country. And the GFS is uh, pretty much identical as well. So uh, both miles are in agreement. High pressure, again, centred pretty much over the top of the country. Low pressure in the Atlantic and plunging down the eastern side of Europe. Could be really very cool and unsettled for eastern parts of Europe in the 7 to 10 day time frame. But for us, we're on the warm side of the jet. We're doing something like that with flow with jet stream. So, again, there's going to be loads of dry weather coming up with that in the 7 to 10 day time frame. High pressure will be in control of the weather. Uh, these are the GFS upper air temperature amplification ensembles for the next couple of weeks. So we're at Manchester uh, today. So, red line here is a 30 year upper air temperature average 
for Manchester. No real changes compared to yesterday. We're starting off warm of an average uh, day. Going to go a little bit cooler um, sort of tomorrow into Saturday. Remember, temperature lift ups, lifts up uh, through the second half of the weekend into early next week. Bit of a drop again occurring around the middle part of next week, perhaps. And then off we go, lifting those temperatures up. Um, going into quite a prolonged spell of uh, warm weather, seemingly, or warmer than average weather, as we look into the final week of September. Precipitation-wise, a lot of dry weather coming up as well. So, uh, loads of dry weather up to the weekend. Could be a little, little bit of rain early next week, and then be back to dry conditions again for several days. Again, possibly just those hints. Talked about this in the video yesterday and the day before. Possibly just those hints for the final week of September that things are beginning to turn more unsettled. But it's all very extended rain stuff. It's a long way off. And in the more reliable time frame, just lots of dry weather coming up. Temperature anomalies from the 12th to the 20th of September. Actually not that exciting, really, given uh, given the upper air temperatures look largely uh, above average. You'd probably expect it to be a bit warmer than this. Than this. Maybe we're going to get some cold nights. Remember... Nights are rapidly going to start cooling down from any time from now onwards, really, uh, if you're under high pressure, particularly, particularly if it's a clear high with low humidity. Um, then because the, the nights are getting really long now, uh, it is possible that the nights will off, the cool nights will offset the warmer days a little bit. So uh, from the 12th to 20th of September, we see that northern Britain is coming out actually a little bit cooler than average. Down in the south, it's close to or a little bit above average. Um, but it's not guaranteed to be exceptionally warm, let's put it uh, that way. Uh, but it remains very dry, of course, under this high pressure. So precipitation anomalies from the 12th to the 20th of September, they're coming out significantly dry and average, particularly so for England and Wales. That's how the GFS is looking for Sunday, man. High pressure is ridging into the south. Low pressure is affecting the north, so there could be some cloud outbreaks of rain for North Park Scotland, for England and Wales under this ridge of high pressure. Temperatures could peak on Sunday at around 25 degrees, somewhere like London. And that high pressure just slips away for us a little bit on uh, Monday, allows some slightly cooler air in from the north and the west. Um, or from the north and the northeast, I suppose. Uh, and then the high pressure comes back in from the west as we go through to Tuesday. So by the middle of next week, we're under a, a 1,030 millibar ridge of high pressure. And uh, that's going to bring a lot of dry weather with it as well. Probably quite warm by day when the sun's out. Could be a little bit chilly by night. Watch out. Perhaps an increasing risk of some fog patches through the course of next week. Uh, that's Thursday. Again, high pressure is dominating. Well, means high pressure carries on into Friday as well. No real changes. And then into the following weekend, which is like the 21st to 22nd of September. Uh, the high pressure just begins to slip a little bit then. And low pressure started to come back in from off the So by day 10, possibly just begin to turn a little bit more unsettled for northern and western parts. The country still will be mainly dry and quite warm down in the south. That uh, area of low pressure just there is the remains of some sort of tropical storm or hurricane type feature, I would have thought. And then we're going to the extended range, and actually this GFS run uh, suddenly turns things unsettled. So uh, we're 300 hours away now, we're up to Tuesday, 24th September. We're looking a lot more unsettled. This is some sort of uh, remains of that, uh, some sort of tropical feature uh, just there. And uh, that actually pushes Norbert into quite a major area of low pressure. So this gets us to Wednesday, 25th of September, looking very unsettled at this point. Quite a big change there beyond day 10 from this particular GFS run. But do please bear in mind, this is very unreliable. It's... Um, being uh, being driven largely by tropical developments. Those tropical developments haven't even developed into tropical developments uh, yet. So uh, the way the model is placing those tropical features, um, of course, will have a big impact on what happens downstream. That's how we finish up with this GFS run on Saturday 28th of September. We're looking... Uh, to be building this ridge in from the west again. Um, but actually, we're quite cool. We're bringing winds in from an east or northeasterly direction, trying to settle things down. That's a more unsettled final week to September. The hints for a more unsettled last week of September have been there for a little while now, within some of the model output. So I think it is, again, I said this yesterday, it is that final week of September that we are channeling for the chance of something more unsettled and, you would say, more autumnal developing. 
That's for GM. Again, for Saturday, high pressure is into the south. Low pressure is into the north. We're looking mainly dry from the west. Could be some rain up across Scotland. That's uh, taking us through to um, Monday and then on to Tuesday and into Wednesday. Again, same idea, really. High pressure is ridging in from the Atlantic through the middle part of the week. We've been a slightly cooler air mass, though, but a lot of dry weather to, uh, to come next week. That gets us uh, to the end of next week. That's why the 20th of September, high pressure then is sitting over and to our southeast. We are actually drawing quite a warm southerly to southeasterly flow. So if anything, temperatures probably lift up through the second half of next week. We get to day 10. Again, just maybe hints at that high pressure beginning to slip away then at day 10, so the 22nd of September. It still is... Um, it still has an influence on our weather big time, still mostly dry and fine and probably quite warm. But you'll see the centre of that high, instead of being sort of over the UK, is now over Hungary and uh, going over towards the Black Sea. That sort of area and low pressure looks like it's beginning to get more vigorous in the Atlantic. So that could be the first hints again of a, of a bit of a breakdown at day 10. And then we've got the ECMWF again, same idea for for Sunday. High pressure is dominating over the south. Low pressure looks quite uh, close to Scotland. So it will be wet in the north. And there's quite tightly packed isobars actually to the far north of Scotland. Could be some gale force winds there uh, to the far, very far north of Scotland and into the Northern Isles. Uh, into the early part of next week, that high pressure again reaching back in from off the Atlantic. It does allow some cooler air in from the north, though, through the early part of next week. So out of the three miles, I think the ECM is actually the coolest through the early part of next week. It just allows a little bit more of that northerly flow in. So actually it could get quite chilly through the early part of next week, particularly at night, with the risk of some quite significant ground frost up across the northern parts of the country, I would have thought. Uh, second half of next week starts to warm up, though, as the high pressure begins to slip towards our south. We begin to draw in this warmer, milder, uh, west-southwesterly flow. And then we head up towards day 10, and high pressure remains in control. You'll see that again, gradually the centre of that ridge is moving eastward. So the centre is just here at 1,030 millibars across uh, Poland and that sort of area. And going down towards the Balkans. The ridge is still extending over to the UK, but it looks like it's beginning to lose its influence. We've got this low pressure just here that uh, might be the first signs of a breakdown just a little bit beyond day 10, taking us into the final week of September. These are the options that are on the table within the East Ham Ensemble today for day 10. Quite a few of them, actually, indicate that it's a bit more uncertainty now by the time we get through to day 10 than we've been seeing for a few days. So we have 16 members of the ECM ensembles. This comes from the Icelandic Met Office, of course. 16 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure sort of over the UK and northern France. Low pressure is up to our north. The jet streams push northwards uh, as well. That's mainly dry and quite, uh, quite fine with those. Then we've got 11 that still have that high pressure pretty much dominating most of Northern Europe, the UK, is included. And that does include the control and the operational ECM run too. Seven, uh, again, with high pressure centred over top of the country. Another seven, with high pressure from Greenland ridging down. The western side of Europe, low pressure is in the middle of the Atlantic. So mainly, uh, mainly anticyclonic. But then we have these seven here, but are much more unsettled. They're breaking down the ridge, bringing low pressure in from off the Atlantic. And another three have a deep trough of low pressure over the top of the country and to our northeast, they're bringing in quite cool uh, northwesterly winds. So there's an increasing possibility that by day 10 we're breaking this ridge down. But it looks as though by up to day 10, really the high pressure is still in control. The breakdown, if it happens, will probably be just after day 10. This gets us to two weeks out. These are the options that we've got. Uh, this is 27th of September. We have um, we have 29 members of the East Ensembles with low pressure just to our north and northeast. They're cool, unsettled and showering. 22 members, so a more minority option actually compared to the unsettled option. 22 members with high pressure sort of close to the country. But even these ones have a trough in over Scandinavia. They look like they're back in the region towards the Atlantic and possibly starting to hint at something more unsettled. So again, I think it's that last week of September we're channeling for a change and a breakdown of this high pressure up to day 10. Um, 
the high pressure is certainly in charge, I think. Uh, finally, the Beijing Climate Centre. So these are 500 millibar heights breaking down into 10-day periods. The first 10-day period will take us from the 11th to the 20th of September. The coming 10 days will have low pressure up to our northwest, high pressure down to our south-southwest. And we're bringing most westy winds. Lots of dry weather with that. Most of the up to the north, of course, but many areas will be dry with uh, plenty of high pressure continuing. Then we go through to the next 10 day period, which is the last 10 days of September. It's the 21st to the 30th of September. The above average heights then look like they're pulling out to the west uh, and northwest of the country. There's no particular area of low pressure sets across Scandinavia and eastern parts of Europe. I reckon that could be starting to break down the reach, though. That could be sort of a transitional type um, pattern. So just gradually start to break things down, possibly begin to turn things a little bit more unsettled. The next 10 day period, which is the first 10 days of October, actually looks quite unsettled. This is the 1st to the 10th of October. Low pressure is breaking through then from off the Atlantic. High pressure is pulling into the middle of the, middle of the North Atlantic. And the jet stream is coming through like that. So that would be uh, a good deal more unsettled. It'll be showery, longer spells of rain perhaps for some of us, and probably quite a lot cooler as well. However, Beijing Climate Centre very quickly gets us back to high pressure again. This is days 31 to 40 from the 11th to the 20th of October. Above average heights then start building back in from the Atlantic. This time they're going up towards Scandinavia as well. Low pressure is to our south. And that will start to bring in an easterly type flow. Remember, easterlies in October are not going to be particularly warm. They're certainly not going to be as warm as they are in the summer. They're not going to be particularly cold either, though. Um, they'll probably just bring uh, sort of coolish conditions to eastern coastal areas and otherwise probably near normal type uh, temperatures. But it's interesting that after that, that brief breakdown uh, through the first 10 days of October, we very quickly find ourselves going back to high pressure again as we go through to that middle part of October. Of course, this is what we were suggesting with the autumn forecast, that uh, high pressure likely dominate, dominating this autumn. And although there would be periods and interludes of unsettled conditions, because you're not going to have the same area of high pressure dominating for three months, for 12 weeks continuously, you will get interruptions. Whilst we will get interruptions, we thought, but we will very quickly start getting ourselves back to high pressure again. That's exactly what the Beijing Climate Centre is doing uh, there. We did say that November could do something different, though, so November is the joker in the pack for this autumn. We were unsure what, we was unsure what that difference would be. It might go very wet in November. It could go really quite cold. Something, I think, different will happen in November. That's what we was thinking. Uh, but up to then, again, high pressure dominating. And that's exactly what Beige Climate Centre is showing today. Uh, right, so that's it for your video for today. Uh, to this evening on the blog, I'm going to have a quick rundown on the latest ECM doing a seasonal model update. So if you'd like to have a read of that around 7 o'clock, that would be quite an interesting read. It does take us through the autumn and into the winter. Tomorrow, of course, we've got JMA Friday, the month head look ahead, as always on a Friday. And we'll have a week's Sunday video update as well tomorrow so uh come back for all of those updates tomorrow but that's all for now and thanks for watching